Hey, I'm Phil, and welcome to the Hobby Shop. I'm here with... Don. Uh, I don't... Fuck, I already messed up. Oh, well, uh, we'll just keep going. Okay. Okay, we'll go. Uh, okay, today we're going to be looking at... Well, what is one of the things that a lot of people like in a, in a story? Besides story, it's characters. Actually, I think even when it comes to story, it really is characters. I mean, your most memorable stories are by characters. Or, yeah, you remember the the characters. I'm trying to come up with some smart way to start the show, but I'm not smart. This is why you rehearse before we start. I should have, or at least wrote this down. That's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start writing stuff down so I actually know how to begin these shows. Okay. So, pretty much, characters. We'll just, any character in general, not really... Pacific to anything, just whatever. Well, um, I think what we start off with, as well, what I'll start off with is uh, characters that I feel are developed, are well developed, or characters that are already developed. Which I mean, you know, I could go on and on and on and on for anime, you know, bash, but you know, those characters are already developed as is. I don't really think you, you can really give those characters develop their story. They're already well developed characters as is and you learn about them. Yeah. They don't have development through the stories themselves. My first first thing that popped in my head was Bash. Yeah. Because I think we, we both agree he's probably one of the greatest written characters in anime. Yeah. You know, even Spike Spiegel, already a well developed character. These are characters that are already developed that do not need development. Yeah. And then we see characters that are poorly developed like Sinji. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can try to see what the development is, but you can see what they're trying to do. But is well, and this is one of the things I actually got a question about this this morning. Uh, why is Shinji such a hated character? Why does so many people hate this character? And I don't, and I don't want to rely on that poor excuse of, oh, he's emo. That's no. just a lame excuse. You know, like the problem with him is. He's just, he's annoying, and the problem he he does is he makes it, like, it's over, over that the fact that the world's ending, my father issues is a bigger deal than the world ending. Yeah, and I, I don't really think that's a character thing, that's more of a writing issue, well, but. But the thing is, if you think about it as a character, because I went back and thought about it, and I was like, well, he is a teenager. What do teenagers do? They, uh. Over dramatic. Yeah, they. They mope, they brood. So, as much as he's a hated character, he's a character in the character of that age would probably act. Yes, but I think the reason why a lot of people hate the character is that basically the entire story is halted by his baggage. Uh, and this is something, I don't know, maybe this is one, maybe the movie soured me on the character completely. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen End of the End of Evangelion? Uh, no, I have not. Okay, uh, this is going to be kind of, so I'll try to keep, I'll, I'll try to keep this brief. Um, in the beginning of the movie, which the movie basically is the literal ending of Evangelion, um, and it's, it starts out with apparently at some point, Asuka, is that how you pronounce her name? Uh, I haven't watched it in a long time, so oh, okay. I don't know. Well, the, you know, the bitch. I yeah. can't describe her either. But Just call her Redhead. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's easier. She Apparently she got injured during a battle and she's in a comatose state. Well, Shinji is in her room, in her hospital room, and it's just... I guess he's having like a character moment. He's like... He's like shaking. Like shaking her, and she's comatose. Keep that in mind. But it's he's supposed to be in like a bad emotional state, and he like turns her, and her uh, hospital gown pops open. They cut to the door. The door's locked. Cuts back. Shinji's looking at his hand, and you can't really tell, but you sus you can get an idea what he did. And, and you know he, there's the line that there's the line I'm fucked up, and it's just like yeah, yeah you are. 
I think the problem with Sinji is that he's a fucked up character, but uh, you've watched Gurren Logon, right? Yeah. I think what they were trying to do was someone have something like Simon, yeah, where but, they have that development. Yeah, and I think, and again, I had no idea uh, Gurren Logon was done by the same people who did Evangelion. The, now, Simon, is it Simon? I yeah, always thought it was Seymour. No, it's Simon. Simon, okay. I think. I thought it was Seymour. I could swore it was Seymour, but... Uh, but anyway, that seems like the character they were trying to make Shinji. Yeah. And the difference between these characters is Simon is likable. You ad- you actually like the character. He's yeah, not. You you do feel sorry for him, and you actually like him. Yeah, he's not obnoxious. He's not overly whiny. Um, the and really the whole. Basically, the whole story is Simon becoming a man. That's basically... Well, it's more like Simon becoming a carbon copy of... Uh, well, I know, but that's the concept. <laughs> I'm just saying the concept of it is there. And there's an actual full progression. Shinji, I don't see a whole lot of character development throughout the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at the end of the show, you have that stupid ending with everybody saying congratulations and all that because... Uh, he wants to live! And it just comes out of fucking nowhere because of the how the show paced itself. Uh, this was more a complete character arc for for Simo. Uh, with now, I, it's been a while since I've seen Kieran Line Gun. Uh, I mean, I've never took this one as like this. The reason why I like it so much more than Evangelion was. It didn't have this aura of pretension. It, it was making a silly, it was goofy fun. Yeah, it was fun and it was inspirational, and fun. you could really just see the fun with it. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, come on, you have Kamina. The whole, it just has this whole cheesy, glorious feeling to it. Uh, and it, like I said, I compared it to Power Rangers, uh, a little more competently written, but. It it just had that same sense of fun, just just that enjoyment, and let's be honest, the show basically is a uh, eight year old smashing his robot toys together. That's yeah. basically what it is. Yeah, uh, uh, it's just it's really it's enjoyable, and that's what's actually really bizarre about it. You have one trying to be something more than a show, and you have one that knows it's a show and does really well. Yeah, just. It knows what it is. It plays with that. It, it's like how I described Avengers. I said Avengers was a comic book movie that rolled in it. It just, it just, um, it knew what it was and it loved it. It loved every, every second of what it was, and that's why I like uh, Garlangan so much. And to ans- and that was to answer another question was. Why do I like Ab- Why do I not like Evangelion? Yet yeah, I like um, Garen Lagan. There you go. Yep. Um, let's see. It's a little more. I'm gonna go towards uh, a little bit of reality. Not really reality TV, yeah. but uh, you know, real life shows. Live action. Or live series. action. Um, like character wise, out of development for that, I want to go with my name is our Earl. Really? Yeah. If you actually look at it. He actually does have development, if you actually think about it. I mean, I mean if you look from the start, he's an asshole. He, he literally is an asshole. He's yeah, improving but didn't they himself. Kinda, but then his his whole development kind of happened in the first episode. It didn't necessarily progress. It progressed, actually. Okay. Uh, he actually started to change. Because he had problems with what he was doing. He wasn't used to it. Yeah. He wasn't used to being nice. I... And, See, I was never a big fan of the show, so... Okay. I mean, I can understand it, It's why. a little hard for me that... Although I got in... Although I did... I thought his ex-wife was hilarious. That's really what made me want to watch it. Joy? Yeah. And mostly because that, that actress is... She's... That actress is hilarious. And I've enjoyed almost everything she's ever been in. No, yeah, like, if you look at Joy and Earl, they both actually have character development. Yeah, I mean, after a while, she... You know, she becomes less of a bitch, and as she tries, well, she and as she tries to be a good mother yeah. and, and wife, to uh, crab man, crab man, uh, 
does, does he ever actually have a name? I haven't watched a whole lot of the show, so does yeah, he? Darnell even, Turner. Darn, uh, Darnell, okay. Now, wasn't this made by the same people who did Scrubs? Because it seemed uh, very familiar. No, like, it was done by Greg Garcia Productions, so no. It, I don't know why. It just had that same vibe. I think it, a little sillier, but it, it had that. Same I think it vibe. was like more probably inspired by it. Like you probably see the inspiration for certain parts of it. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, it's just certain shots, certain writing, uh, cer- certain moments in the writing and stuff like that. It felt like Scrubs a little bit. Uh, now Earl was played by who? Uh, um, don't uh, ask me names. Good, something Goodman. I can't remember his first name, but yes. J- Jason Goodman. I yeah. think it's his name. Uh, yeah, Jason Goodman. Uh, that guy is hilarious. I, I really gotta give him credit. Uh, I, I wasn't too. The show wasn't like my one of my favorite comedies or anything, but he he was pretty funny in the show. Uh, he's honestly he's funny in almost anything he's in, except for. How dare Alvin and Chipmunks not make John, Jason Goodman funny? Okay, I, I, I joke, but I've not actually never seen that movie, so... Okay. Um, yeah, um, there is character development there, but I, I don't know. It's, like the first, it's not the first thing that popped in my head. I was kind of shocked you brought that up. Yeah. So, uh, what was your... Or first then. Considering I was looking more at traumas and stuff like that. Um, at first I was going to say uh, Dr. House, but... Okay, his character development I really didn't care for, considering they basically took... They basically made him happy and that made him less interesting. I mean, they still try to keep him like, like Dr. House, but after a while it was just like... I just House is one of those shows where I was really into it. After a while, I just kind of pitted her down and stopped watching it. Yeah, that's kind of how I was with Dexter. Yeah, uh, I never watched Dexter. I've never seen a single episode of it. Uh, it's got a good first like three seasons, but after that, the formula. Kind that's of what people just... tell me. Season four or season five or somewhere where it like it really just shit the bed. Yeah, it. Uh, I don't remember what season it was, but like you save some girl and they kind of like team up together, and that season just made it really hard to stomach and watch. Let's see. Now, I'm, like I said, I was thinking of dramas. I, like a lot of people probably probably would think the guy from Breaking Bad. I've never seen Breaking Bad. I've never um, seen a single episode of it. The reason I didn't go straight to Breaking Bad was because I'm pretty sure everyone would go straight to Breaking Bad, but, uh,. Walt, I think, had a good and a bad development. And what I mean by bad, I mean, it is called Breaking Bad for a reason, because he is... But, you know, when you first see it, you know, he's someone no. who's doing bad things. No, 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 are you seeing bad development because... Uh, are you seeing bad development in quality or... Well, char- I, mean, or? I mean, character and a little bit of quality near the end. And what I want to say is, is that he started off as a person who literally sacrificed a lot for his family especially during you know this was the whole point of the show was he was trying to do everything for his family now during the last season which made me kind of not like it that much is he kind of just stopped caring for his family and he made it more for himself i mean this is what made walter likable this is what made walter a mature and interesting character he did so much for his family he sacrificed so much for his family and now he's just doing it for himself no, like I, I, I really wish like I had some input there, but I just, I said I've never seen it. I've seen three episodes of it. Um, Man, I don't see how you see just three episodes. It gets addicting at times. Uh, I just, I don't know, other things pop in my head, and I just, I, I get watching other things, and it just starts to, you know, there's so much shit I need to catch up on. So, so much, so many shows I've missed because I, you know, I don't watch television. Often, um, I still get people asking me, "What do you think of this show and this show?" And it's all shows from the Sci-Fi Channel, by the way. Mm. I don't watch the Sci-Fi Channel. The only thing I've ever watched on the Sci-Fi Channel lately is Friday Night SmackDown because I'm a wrestling fan. I still think it's stupid that a wrestling show is on the Sci-Fi Channel. 
but bes eh, that's besides the point. Um, I've never watched the Sci-Fi Channel. Most most of the stuff I watch is horror movies on there, but let's be honest, half the shit the show is well, shit. Space Jones. <laughs> uh, but I'm I'm really trying to think. Right now, the show I'm watching right now is uh, The Walking Dead. And I think that has some of the best writing on... I think that is the best written show on television right now. Um, I kind of looped out of it after season two. You really need to jump, jump back into it, because season three was really damn good. Yeah, because se season two kind of made it hard. Season two made it hard because of the whole Sophia thing. The whole thing on the farm, and it just... That it took was, way It was long. a really slow season, and I was just like... Okay, the beginning of the season was good. The yeah. beginning of season two. It's the beginning of the season and the end of the season is where it really picks up. Uh, third season is re really when things start to really get going. And fourth okay. season is just, I think, it, personally, it's my favorite season. It's the fourth season. Okay, uh, I couldn't really stomach it through to season two because the drama of the, I'm cheating on you all. And yeah, that shit was kind of stupid, but it's... It's just, oh, by the way, I, I, I've said before, favorite show on television. He's angry at something. Yeah, I can't speak, I don't know, no, but anyway, they, I am fully aware that the show has sometimes done stupid shit. Last week, we had the scene where two, two of the characters, Daryl and uh, Carol, uh, they they were, they were investigating this van that was hanging off a uh, highway or a overpass or whatever, and you know the front end was hanging off the overpass. The zombies come out of nowhere and just kind of like swarm them. There's too many of them. They pop. They jump into the van. They get in the front seat for some reason, and they get ready for it to tump over. The van tumps over. They crash. Oh, by the way, one it tumbles. Like you would think it would land on the top. Nope. Lands on wheels and they're just fine. They walk away with not even a limp. That it, it bugged the shit out of me because the show usually the writing is so much better than this. And I, I know this is not character related, but it's just something that pissed me off. Cause when I saw it, you wanna know the thing first thing I said? What? Bullshit! Okay. Bullshit! Well, I mean, I thought the thing with the show was it was supposed to make it where it makes it anticipated for you to feel like these characters are going to die. But yeah. I've heard there's a, a selective group of characters that they're not letting die due to popularity. Daryl. Daryl will never die. In the, in the I've show. heard it was also Glenn, too. Glenn has gotten really popular. And speaking of, if I had to pick a favorite character, by the way, it would be Glenn. And I hate doing that because he's like everybody's favorite. But he really is my favorite character. Um, but the show does such a great job of making you care about the characters. Now, the characters themselves, some of them aren't that interesting, but they put you in these situations where you really want to see them make it. Did that annoying girl die? Well, which one? The, uh, blonde. From, she was like from season one. Uh... Yeah. Gun girl, I can't remember what her name was. I can't remember either, but she was pretty annoying. Her, her sister was it. Her sister that got yeah, bit she there. Yeah, bit died in the first season. Yeah, uh, yeah, and she, she was like a focal point in season four. Uh, and I, I know a lot of people didn't like her. I I actually did because uh, I don't know. I just thought she was a really good character. She eventually, spoilers, does die. <laughs> He's definitely angry at something. He hears us talking, so he... It's... I don't know. He's a stupid dog. Shush! Anyway. Um, part of the character that has the most development is Glenn. If, if we're just looking at pure, just pure development, Glenn has had the most character development. He's, you know, at first he was just that... He was just that guy who would be the distraction or whatever. And he's actually gotten to the point where he's a he's pretty badass. Not not in like, you know... Well, I thought he was pretty badass in season one because he knew what he was doing. Yeah, um, Glenn in the... 
But in in the beginning, Glenn really didn't have a reason to do anything. He was just keeping himself alive. After meet, meeting Maggie, now he has another reason to keep alive, keep alive for her, uh, since they pretty since they pretty much become you know they basically become a couple. Uh, I think they even like now you know obviously not for real, but zombie apocalypse. The closest thing they can get to being married. Yeah. Um, now, a lot of what drives him is 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 a uh, a lot of what drives him is uh, Maggie. Uh, but when I like I said though, what makes him a badass is not that you know he kill like more zombies than anybody else or anything. Like that. It's not like that. It's just he's basically. He's gone through so much bullshit throughout the show. He's finally getting to the point to where it's like, no, we're no, we're doing things my way, you know. And he actually stand, he actually stands his ground and stuff. Um, usually he, you know, he's kind of becoming the guy who calm, calms everybody down. He, tr you know, tries to get things done, and he doesn't. Basically, there's two characters. Um, I can't remember the character's name, but there was Rick and there was this new guy in the newest season. He was escorting this guy, this guy Eugene, uh, to Washington because he, th spoilers, thought he was a, scien a scientist with information to put it into the, zo the zombie plague. Winds up he lied so he can uh, survive. So uh, he paired... So basically, he had them drag him all the way from Texas to Georgia, and well, thinking that, hey, we get him to Washington, he, he'll fix it, everything. And it turned out the guy was lying. Um, anyway, prior to that revelation, uh, Rick and the, the guy who was escorting Eugene, they get in an argument, and Glenn is the first one trying to... He's trying to be the middleman. He's trying to uh, keep everybody keep everybody calm, and he's he's that character that's just kind of he's in the middle. He just uh, he's starting to think on his own. He's starting to kind of become that kind of become a leader. Um, and he's he's had the most character development from from episode from episode two, I guess. Yeah, it would be episode two. Uh, to the latest episode, he has he's came a long way. Um, Carol has also came a long way, from losing her daughter to uh, to basically, you know, she was this uh, you know this battered wife uh, who couldn't stand up for herself, couldn't speak for herself, and. There for a while, she became. Seems like he's parking out everything and drives up. Yeah, he will. Garbage truck. Uh. Garbage truck. Anyway, she came from being this battered wife to, um, basically, taking control of her life. Um, now she has. Now she's gone through a lot of back. She has a lot of baggage at this point. Uh, just various things that's happened to her on the way, um, and it's really it really took her character for the ringer. Um, Daryl has also changed a lot. He was this kind of basically he was basically a punk ass kid at the beginning of well, this. Well, he was following his brother's example. Yeah, which uh, his brother, by the way. Uh, this shouldn't be a spoiler to anybody who actually keeps up with the show. Uh, Merle winds up surviving. Like, he actually gets off that rooftop by sawing his own hand off. Uh, and he, for a while, he was the governor's uh, right-hand man at, in uh, Woodbury. Uh, did, you didn't get to that, that far, did you? No, I was on season two. Okay, uh... What bears is kind of this town that they barricaded and kind of restarted. Uh, the governor is, uh, I think it was a vet, N not not veteran, a veterinarian. 
Okay. Uh, or something like that. He he was just kind of. He was just kind of this bot, bottom of the barrel kind of guy. After the Valkyrie game, he kind of became a big shot, uh, and he has he had issues, a lot of issues. He was based. Um, they toned him down from the comic books. In the comic books, he was just a ruthless, evil, sadistic son of a bitch. Hmm. In the show, they toned him down a little bit. Until they really went all the way with the character, and then he kind of became kind of cartoony. I mean, come on. He licks the barrel of a gun. Hmm. <laughs> he gets a little... He, he gets nutty. Um, and I was hoping there would have been a little bit more with him, but there was, I guess they were trying to stick with the source material. I wish they would have done something with him, kind of uh, turn his character, because... There for a while, you thought after Woodbury went to shit, and everybody there is dead or at or took up with uh, Rick, Rick and the crew, uh, they settled in a prison. They have their own little place okay. at this point. He's the governor is just ro roaming around. He comes across a family, sticks with them for a little while. Uh, you know. Gets back with uh, some of the people left over from Woodbury, and basically he takes over, and his you know his old colors show up again. Uh, during this, you would think, okay, he's just he's going to turn and leave. You know, he's going to be, he's there's going to be some change to this character. And there was a little bit, but I was a little disappointed when they kind of went, okay, we're going back to the crazy governor. I'm like, really? You could have had something there. Um, there's a few few times in the show where I feel like they had uh, they missed they uh, ha had an opportunity they missed. Um, anyway, the so he really didn't have a whole lot of character development. And honestly, when they introduced him, I'm like, really, we need a villain? Aren't the zombies kind of the villain? Yeah, they wanted the whole human or bad aspect, but I thought that's what the whole season two was about. Yeah, I that mean, people can be bad. I, I was thinking they they did did away with Shane way too quickly. Um, but I guess it was I don't know how long Shane stuck stuck around in the comic book. Um, so maybe maybe it, you know it was the right time for it. Um. Uh, and one of the things, one of the things I do like love about The Walking Dead is it always, every season has like that oh shit moment. Um, all of episode one for for season one. Yeah. Uh, the well, actually, when the zombies come through the campsite, that's a pretty old oh shit moment. Season two, the highway, where where the herd comes through. Uh, I'm not going. <laughs> And now they want inside. Okay. I'm not going to list off every single one because I can't remember each one. Uh, the end of season two, where, where another horde comes through the farm. That's a big old shit moment. Uh, which, you know, people were like shocked about how many zombies there were. Watch, the, watch the, this new season. They, they're about to hit, hit a military base. And it is literally thousands of them. And I have some other characters I'm trying to think of who had development. Uh, Michonne. She's this... She, you might have saw her in the season two. You know, she has the, t the two zombies. You know, the bigger with the two zombies on the chains. Oh, I've heard about her. Yeah, okay, um, yeah. She's supposed to be that now the one character of, I'm going to live on my own because I know what I'm doing. Yeah, and, and it's just basically... And Walking Dead always seems to like to make them female. They like female characters. That's what I've noticed. Um, that, and yeah, that did stir up kind of a... People thinking, you know, going with kind of a lesbian thing just because it's two women surviving. And I think they... I think they were together for like eight months. Surviving, because you know, uh, what's her name gets separated from the rest of them, um, and they wind up being caught by Merle, and they 
wind up in Woodbury. Um, and Machan don't trust. She back then she trusted nobody. Um, she trusted nobody, and you learn later on she went through some real shit. Like, uh, ah, fucking. If anybody wa watched the show, they already know this. Uh, the two, the two, I think was her boyfriend and brother. Mm. That's who who the zombies were. Mm. I had a feeling they had some like connection when people were talking about it. I was like, huh. And I bet they have some. You all, and you already know the whole thing about the smell. She yeah, has them around no. her so that she can walk among the dead and they won't notice her. Well, I thought you had to put it on you. Yeah, but she has them so close to her. It's, okay. I don't know, no arms, no bottom jaw. I really apologize for the barking dogs. I don't know why they're going completely apeshit today. Ah, shit. That's why I hate doing it here. I mean, it's convenient, but them. Yeah. Uh, so anyway. God, Lee, what are they after? They probably have a cat pin back there or something. Cat or squirrel, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, kind of lost my train of thought. You were talking about the smell. Oh, yeah. Anyway, with, with Michonne, her... She slowly, when she gets picked up by by Rick's group, um, she slowly starts to open up, especially to Rick's son, Carl, who, and, you know, Carl has his own health development. Now, he gets to the point where he can take care of himself. Um, he, you know, he... I heard people wanting Carl to die. Oh, come on. See, I, I've heard that. I don't see why. I mean, now he, okay, he was annoying at first, but now, I like the character. I don't see anything wrong with him now. Um, him him and Michonne kind of have a, I, I wanted to, no, I didn't want to say mother-son relationship, but more of a, uh, more of a younger brother, older sister kind of relationship. Um, and he's the first one she opens up to. Later on, she opens up the Rick, and... Soon she just becomes another member of the, another member of the team, um, and there's so many other characters that have development like Beth. She goes from being suicidal to, uh, to determined to fight to keep a lot, stay alive. And for, and for a while she was kind of like their their moral compass. Um, you know and. I, I, one of the things I love about the show is how everything's connected. Uh, everything comes back sooner or later. Hmm. Like, she she gets Beth gets kidnapped and she's brought to Atlanta, uh, where the, a few police officers and a, and a doctor kind of barricade a hospital and uh, basically they're taking they're taking up anybody they can find and providing medicine. Um, Sounds great, but one thing in this show that I've learned is nothing says what it seems. Everything, so, and I'm a little this kind of disappointment a little bit is where they kind of get in this situation where it's like, can they please not be crazy? Can they just be trying to survive? Just be nice people? Nope. Woodbury, uh, that one place where it happened to be ran by cannibals, which. Can we not have a zombie movie? Can we have a zombie movie without cannibals? Besides the living dead? I don't know. It seems like cannibals are usually always gone for it. They always want to try and do that plot twist. Yeah. I mean, even the game does it. And that's the only weak part in the game is the cannibal part. And it's like... This is so trying to be sex to change. Oh my gosh, I curve at that point. With the crazy family. Um... Well, I mean, they, they kind of had a point with theirs, you know. They were just like, why why waste? Yeah, but it was like, yeah, you've got kinda... plenty of animals you can kill. you got fucking cow. Yeah, they can make bread. They had a nice farm, and it was just like, seems like an off choice to really be cannibals. Yeah. Um, uh, shush! God damn. I think he won't be as loud if he was in here. Uh, I, you, as... He won't bark as much if he was in here. I think that's the problem. He wants in here, and he can't. 
can't get in. Um, anyway, the I can talk for hours about Walking Dead. It, it, it is my favorite show on television, this, despite some of the issues. Wait, I was going to make a point. Uh, let me finish this, then I'm, then I'm done with this. Uh, Beth gets picked up by these people. She, she gets kidnapped by them, and... Um, you know, this one cop's riding her the whole time. She, um, she's just uh, digging into her the whole time, and she's basically thinking, uh, you know, she thinks she's suicidal because of the cuts on her wrist. Because in season two, she slit her wrist, um, and she's like, "No, I, I, you know, I'm willing to survive." And she just thought it was bullshit. Uh, which I like that thing about that actress is when you can t like she she's a great eye actress she she's great uh, when it comes to acting with her eyes because even when she's saying something she has this look like she has this look on her face you know this look in her eyes that you're like she she's saying this but she doesn't believe it uh, that was more later earlier in the show but at this point she fully believes it she's fully willing to fight to survive. Um, it's just a li little character development, but it was but it was full it was a full arc for her. It did take her a while to get to that point. And she, you know, had every right to try again after losing her father, losing uh, all her siblings except for Maggie. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about earlier in season two when the farm was still okay and all that and she still tried it. But, um, that's pretty much it. it I'm not going to go for every single character because there, there's too many characters and I, I've talked on long enough about this. Speaking of Walking Dead, what about the game? Yeah, I think we could probably go more into the games now. Uh, I could probably talk on and on and on and on and on on that. But, uh, you know, talk about a character that didn't really need development, Lee. He didn't really need development. He was kind of a blank slate, but he had, he had a character there. But well, it was the father-like character yeah. that you know did but a lot. I think that also came from how how the player kind of felt like you wanted you wanted to protect Clementine. You wanted you know you you didn't want anything wrong to happen to her. You really felt like it was your duty to protect this girl and that's one of the things I liked about the game and it's something like uh, I think Dead Rising tried this where it made you try to care about a little girl yeah, yeah but this this is where it really really worked um, now to be a good character you don't need all this character development and all that you don't need to be a complex character to be a good character uh, look at Clementine she's and one of the things that and this this is why I would say, this pretty much sums it up. Look at a character like Clementine, and then look at a character like Duck. Where Duck's obnoxious, he's kind of, well, you're I mean, kind of wanting him to die. A, he was a little kid. I liked him during season, or episode three. I didn't feel like he deserved to really die, I was just kind of like, Is wow. that episode? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, at, that point, at that point, you're like, you turn kind of a corner on that, and you're like, Well, it's because oh, of the way man. Kenny... You, Kenny handled it. Yeah, and it was more of like the connection for Kenny. No, no. I want to ask: Did you kill the kid, or did you like Kenny? Uh, I chose to. And so did I. I think everybody did. I don't think anybody would let Kenny do that. I mean, that would be horrible to do to your own. Yeah, I mean, just the idea of losing a child and well, and your wife too. Well, yeah. I mean, suicide. He lost everything he just that day. Lost everything. I felt so bad for Kenny, but there was a point to where it was like. Shut the fuck up, Kenny. Well, I mean, it made sense for the character. And, uh, you know, he went through a lot of development, especially during season two. Season two I've not played, so... Yeah. Uh, I saw a clip where, like, he kind of had, like... Uh, he, he has another woman in his life, and, and he, like, loses her. So it's just like, this character is probably going to shoot himself. By this point, but I don't know. No, no, how to it's, play it's, season it's two. pretty interesting what they do with him. Uh, I don't really want to spoil it for you. But season two, I guess it depends on how you play. 
how the fuck did Kenny survive? Um, Especially it, the way I put, the way it, I played it makes zero sense because he died. Yeah, I think that's the, really the problem with it because if you do it where you don't save Ben, it makes perfect sense. If you don't save, yeah. If which, you let Ben die, I've never done that actually. I've always uh, saved him. I did, I did a replay and I was just like, you know what? And when I did a replay, you're fucking annoying. No development, no nothing, uh, doesn't help, doesn't bother to help, ruins everything. He's and just, doesn't try to make things better. So not I was just no like, punk. The only reason why I let him live was because Clement and I liked him. Oh, the thing is, I didn't let Clem with me, that's why. Do what? I didn't let, I didn't have Clementine with me. I didn't take her to, uh... I thought, see, I can't remember what I first did. I did both when I, I, oh, I've replayed the game, so I did both. I took her, I took her the first time. Second time I left her, because yeah, I, I know, because I already, I already knew nothing was going to happen. With, uh, with, uh, what's his name? Omid. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, fuck you, season two! I saw the first first episode of it. Fuck you, season two. Yeah, I was hoping for more development. Like if they didn't do I, that, I, I just I don't know. He was like my favorite, one of my favorite characters. Well, it was a comic. He was a comic relief, and you know him, him and Krista were really. Although the first really time you meet them, though, he is kind of creepy. Uh, you know, of course, anybody who talked to Clam was creepy in my book. Even, especially Mister Hobo. Oh. Uh, Fuck, I forgot his name. I don't know who you're talking about. I do find it funny that it, in the game, in the comics, in the show, they once they make you care, that's when they kill them. And you... Yeah. Like, when you're like, oh, man, they're making them likable. You see it coming a mile away. Uh, I was pissed over... Oh, going back to the show, I was pissed when they killed off T-Dog. Yeah. Uh, got out of character. There could have been more you could have done with the character. But I mean, I think the, the biggest thing was Lee dying. Out of like Lee? all... Lee? Oh my god. Out I, of all characters like dying in anything, it was really Lee that was... That's what... I think that's what made everybody into a bubbling baby. Yeah. I mean, I, there's not a whole lot that makes me cry. That made me cry. I cried I mean, like a bitch after that. Well, I mean, it's just when he's talking to Clem and shit, you're like, holy fuck. What is she going to do? You know, and all this... And it... Just leaves you hanging. You know, yeah. Like I know she I know she's fine. But before season two, before that even happened, you had no idea what happened. Yeah, you just see you see two people walking, which is presumably Krista and Omid. Yeah, but you don't know that you don't yeah. know that hundred percent and you're just like, Oh my god, give me a happy ending already. Damn Yeah, it, uh season season one that was a really huge kick in the nuts. God but, I mean, it was perfectly done well, you know, how much they made us connect with Lee. Yeah. And Clementine. It's just, like, godly. And I felt, when, when I, when people told me the story was sad and all that, I thought Clementine was going to die. That's what I thought was going to happen. And thank God they didn't do that. Uh, that would have been fucking horrible. Yeah, if it was vice versa, I don't think. Oh, I, my God. Because, I mean, she's a little girl, and she's, like, a really likable character, which is yeah. weird. I don't like little kids. I find them annoying, but she... She worked. Yeah, she's, like, she has the innocent as aspect, but it's just, it fits so perfectly that you care for the character. Yeah, I mean, when she feels sad, you're sad, and just, like, there's moments where you're, you're, what you do is all dependent on what she thinks. Like, uh, did you take the stuff from from the from the abandoned car? No, because she didn't. She didn't want it because it wasn't her. It wasn't mm -hmm. theirs to take. Which I mean, that's foreshadowing for season two, actually, which is actually kind of funny if you think about it, because she does have the effect of basically what she says. Uh, I remember when it comes back in episode five with with, with the guy, and I was like, I am gonna rip your goddamn throat out. The stranger? Yeah, the kidnapped Clementine. It's just like, you get in parent mode, basically. And it's, and I, it sounds ridiculous, like, me saying it, because I'm, I'm not a parent. I have no concept of that. But you just, you want to rip the guy's eyes out. I thought he was a really good villain. Like, that's what I was hoping the governor, from what you said, was going to be like. Was maybe something like that. He's still a good Where, character. It's just, they could have done more. Yeah. But the stranger was just 
so oddly diabolical. Like he just has this one screen time, and you hate him right off the bat, like the most thing out of everything else. Yeah, even uh, though you understand where he's coming from, basically, you basically and inadvertently you killed his family. Uh, and one thing I do like at in uh, I think it was episode one of season two. I saw a playthrough of it. I could be wrong. This could have been the uh, 400 days thing. But I, I like how they put like little touches in there to kind of tie it back to the first season. Like on the side of the road, depending on how you play. Like on the side of the road, I think... You, I, I don't know the situation. Like you're a character and you're driving down the road. And you actually come across... Depending on who died at the, on roadside, you, find, you see their corpse. Yeah, it's when you, it's 400 days when you're playing as a, I forgot his name, the young African, the young kid. Yeah. And uh, it is either Doug or, uh, God, it's just the only character. No, not Krista. Krista's the, uh, later on. Okay. Oh. Uh, not Chris. Uh, I know who you're talking about, but the reporter. Yeah, the reporter who can't put batteries which, in a goddamn thing. Which, by the way... Who picked Doug? Did anybody pick Doug? I never picked Doug. I did pick Doug my first What the play fuck's through. he gonna do? Well, I thought he was pretty smart, because he did get her out, and that's why I well, picked her. Well, keep in mind, the whole Doug thing. The only difference is he uses, like, a a, a, a laser pointer. Yeah, he uses and a laser pointer. Basically, he does all the same shit that... Your choice in the beginning, it means nothing. Yeah, it's Coke or Pepsi, pretty much. Honestly, that is most of your choices in this game. Yeah, it just it affects dialogue. That's, I mean, that's what we can only do at this point, is we can only affect dialogue. But if you also look at you know, the Walking Dead games, it's really the main characters that really connect in Season 1. Yeah. That you really get involved in, too. I haven't watched, like, I haven't seen a whole lot of Season 2. From what I can tell, I don't like to get any of the characters except for Clementine. Maybe if I actually played the whole thing and and then make then maybe I'll start to connect yeah. with the characters. Because the the problem with season two was it, when it comes out as pieces, it's not that enjoyable. But when you play it as a you got whole, marath- you got marathon. Yeah. yeah. When you play it as a whole, it's actually enjoyable, like, and some of the characters' problems kind of make sense because you're like, well, this did happen to so and so. This did happen to this I way. I still have every episode on my Xbox right now. Uh, yeah. Just because sometimes you you can have it. You can, I even have it on my fucking phone. Episode one only because I have to pay for episode two, but still. But uh, yeah, it's just it's really good, and I you know I really suggest playing season two just for Clementine. Yeah. Just because I really like her development. Oh my god. Let that little asshole in. Okay. He might try to get in your lap, but I can't handle the little car, can you? Okay, well, we got our third little guest, I guess. But, uh, yeah, you know, Clementine actually had a really good development with her. No, she goes from being the innocent little girl to actually being a really good... She actually becomes a survivor. Yeah. And I think that's what Kenny called her early on in season one. That she's a, you know, a little survivor. And, you know, if you look at a lot of other games, I mean, I, like I said, I still haven't played uh, The Last of Us. Well, I... See, I was hoping to get a PlayStation 4. Price doesn't drop, so I'm probably not going to get one. Yeah. That I was waiting for uh, Last of Us Remastered. Yeah, I'm a little, still a little sad. It's just an exclusive. I was just hoping that maybe one day it would hit Steam. Nope. Nope, still an exclusive. So that makes me a little sad. But uh, if you think about it, like a lot of characters, there's not really a whole lot of video characters that video game characters that really stick. I mean, the only other characters I know of is like Commander Shepard. And a lot of the Mass Effect crew. Does Shepard... I've never played Mass Effect, so I... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't know anything on characters from there. Uh, a character I've always liked, and it's... I don't know why. I'm, not, I'm honestly not 100% sure why. 
uh, when I think of my favorite video game character, one character always pops in my head. It's, and no, it's, and there's more to it than he's just badass. Is uh, Solid Snake. I always found, be, be it uh, Solid Snake or Big Boss, I've always found that character to be really interesting. Not a whole lot of character development because he really doesn't need it. But he's just one of those characters you just you play a game solely for that character. Uh, at least I do. Yeah, yet yeah, Metal Gear Solid Two didn't piss me off. No. Oh. Be probably because it's the first Metal Gear game I ever played. But uh, if I have to think of any other characters. Uh, that's a little hard for me to think of, like, video game characters I legitimately cared about as a character. I mean, a lot of them are usually, like, stereotypes, or they're very plain, like Master Chief. He really yeah, suffers. Yeah, there's not a whole lot in there. Uh, or, I don't know, uh, I'm really trying to think. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. So, I'm sure something will hit me later on, but... Although I get, I can't, I'm not throwing this in here. I'm just saying, I'm like, I... Because a lot of other games I played, like, uh, I'm trying to remember, Honest Hearts was just story. The characters themselves... On uh, what? The World War I. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really just story driven. Yeah, I mean, you did, you did care for the characters, but they didn't have a whole lot to That them. was a beautiful game, though. Just... <laughs> but let's, let's kind of get off video games for, for, for now. Because, honestly, the only characters I'm thinking of is because, okay, when I think of video games, I can't do much because all I got is Phoenix Wright on my head. That's all that's in my mind right now is Phoenix Wright, but... I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of characters I like that are interesting, but they don't really have characters to them, like uh, Okami and, uh, you know, Star Fox. They're, you know, the characters oh, I like, characters but like, they're right. just characters. They don't really have that much... I think that's what games really seem to have a problem with. They're just like the silent protagonist. Yeah, um, like there's Gordon. games that do give you characters you care about, but it's just you can't think of them right off the top of your head because there's characters you like, like I don't know, Assassin's Creed. I, I, I like Ezio. Uh, I don't care for the, what's his face, the you know modern day protagonist, but uh, like Ezio. But there, there's characters I like, but not a whole lot of characters I think are like. Wow, that's a great character and all that. Yeah, they're just interesting. It, maybe something from Metal Gear, like, uh, I don't know, Raiden. Or Raiden, I should say. Actually, not a whole lot there, but... <laughs> okay, okay, that's another character where I'm like, I like that character. But it's not, like, that uh, what a wonderful character. Okay. Uh, out of time, there's one. Yeah? Um, let's see. Yeah, we, we might have to come back to video game characters. Because uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, how about, let's see, what we, what we, what we haven't touched is, we haven't t touched uh, Western cartoons. Cartoons? We've always touched anime, but we haven't. But I mean, I, I can't announce Avatar because I haven't watched it. Yeah, I do want to watch it. I, yeah. But I'm a little annoyed that Netflix doesn't have it on there. Yeah. They have the stupid movie. Well, from what I've heard uh, the char a lot of those characters are really likable and all that but uh well from animated shows I was thinking about this does it the character came from comic books because obviously what I'm about to talk about is a comic book show Batman the animated series this is a show that took kind of generic characters and really made them into characters that you sympathize with that you actually feel bad for a lot of these characters, uh, Baby Doll, uh, Two Face, uh, Mr. Freeze. I think out of the villains out of uh, Batman, my still my favorite is Joker, just because I really like how they go through the more psychotic and darker, darker with him. I like when he's cartoony because you can tell that there's something dark and twisted behind, you know, the the silliness. That's why I like. Uh, the Batman version of the Joker because he is so fucking gone he is so fucking twisted if you really and I've heard a lot of people talk about this it's like oh he he's not you know he's not as twisted he's not no no I mean he mentally breaks people down in that show obviously it's not as funny I mean 
he's not as rememberable because, come on, Mark Hamill. Yeah. Uh, although the guy who did the voice, great voice actor. Um, I've been telling people for weeks to check this out. Go check out the movie. I know that voice. It's on Netflix. Uh, they actually have kind of a joke off between Mark Hamill and the guy who did the Joker and the Batman. Now all we have to do is throw in Cesar Romero, and there we go. So, yeah, pretty sure he's dead. But, um... You, oh my god. How far are we at? We're about almost an hour, not really. About five minutes away. Okay. Can you pause it for a sec? As I was saying, the, uh... The, the show, Batman the Animated Series, is... I've always found it amazing how they can take generic characters and really make you um, feel for them. Uh, some characters, not all characters, some characters, they did such a great job of portraying how they were they were normal people at one point, and just certain dark events turned them into monsters, basically, uh, be it their fault or not. Um, well, I mean, that's usually what a villain is, is usually someone that is an anti-hero or something bad happens to them. Yeah, and I think, honest, I think, see, some of these re retellings of these characters has, or, have been so good that the com that c DC has accepted it as, has accepted it as actual canon. Like, Mr. Freeze's backstory is now the backstory from, from the cartoon. They invented the whole love one, the, the whole frozen wife and all that, that came from the cartoon. That came from the animated series. Even Joel Schumacher used this idea. And, yeah. The... Now, probably the character that everybody, and I mean everybody who's watched the show, talked about how if it didn't make them cry, it brought a tear to their eye. That was Baby Doll. Just because it, the idea was she was an actress who just snapped. The, her whole thing is she she suffered from a disease that kept basically kept her looking like a uh, five year old, or you know she uh, was it this disease was its name had uh, guy who played uh, Webster. Um, I'm running a blank. Uh, but but you know who I'm talking about, yeah. right? It has a, a disease that keep. Makes them look really young. Yeah, they don't really age. They don't age. They don't grow. She, she basically has that disease, and you know, after the show she got famous for ended, she tried to become a serious actress. Tried to, tried to, uh, she tried her hand at stage performances and all that. No, I don't get up there. And just, okay, uh, and after being rejected in uh, being basically labeled um, Baby Doll, because that was her character's name, she snapped. She snapped and kind of created this alternate personality where she actually shifts shape, she actually sh shifts from herself to Baby Doll. And honestly, when, when that switch is flipped, it's scary actually. Because they do this so well to where it's unsettling. Hmm. It is legitimately creepy. But there are scenes where, you know, where her cell kind of pops out. And they actually do these things where, and it's kind of clever because she has like, she set up these lights to kind of give her backstory. And it's because it's all, you know, it's all the delusions of this crazy person. But they set a light where you actually see like the wrinkles under her eyes, where you can actually tell, you know, see her age. Um, it's not like very apparent, but you can. It's just the way they play with the lighting, um, and that's one of the things I loved about the show is how they use shade, shout, uh, use shading, and you know, it's stuff you can't get, you can't do in real life. Um, you can't really get away with this in any other medium. Uh, but there was this, but the ending, spoilers, I, I'm getting so sick of saying that, but it's not what I'd be pissed. Um, the end of the episode, she's in the fun, she's in the fun house, uh, Batman's tr chasing her down, 
she's in like this the a hall of mirrors and she sees like and we're seeing what she sees what she thinks she sees she thinks she sees her herself as an adult you know as normal and you know there's a scene where she has her gun it's in you know, her gun and her doll and she, you know she's trying to you know shoot batman she just keeps seeing his reflection and there's a shot where she looks right in the mirror and sees um herself but normal and you know right before she pulls the trigger you see a tear fall from her eye and she shoot, shoots the mirror she just she's keep pulling the trigger you know she's out of rounds batman just walks up to her she just drops the gun you know just hug, you know she hugs his leg and just she just completely crumbles and just starts crying and that <laughs> fuck that's actually affecting me right now as I'm talking about it that's how effective that episode was mm. it it didn't make me cry it brought a tear to my eye though I just like that was one of those episodes where you're just like holy fuck that that was it, it's one of my favorite episodes the the writing the the uh the, the art direction, the the uh, d just the basic storytelling was just masterfully done, and this is a fucking cartoon. Mm -hmm. This was a superhero cartoon. Sh you know, you want to know what they showed right before in this? Animaniacs. <laughs> then they probably showed Tiny Toons after it. It's just, this show was so good, and that, when I talk about the show, I can't help but gush about the show. I hate doing it because it makes me sound like, you know, a blubbering fanboy. But I can't help it. If you notice, I have season one and two right there. God, I know. <laughs> I'm still working on trying to get the whole entire show, but, um... Well, yeah, there, there are some superhero ones that captivated me. I think the only one that really, really got me for superheroes was, uh, Teen Titans. Oh, are you talking about the Terra episode? I started, I started to rewatch the show. Oh, okay. That was one of the first ones I went back to watch. But actually, n not that one. It's actually the episodes building up to that. I wa re watched. And. I, I don't know what to say. It was great. I mean, it, it was. It was great, but. People. And people were right. As a season finale, it's basically a fuck you. Because it's like. You get invested in these characters. You actually want to see Beast Boy happy. You want to see the. By the way, and that comes from somebody who hates that character. I hate Beast Boy. He's just my least favorite character. Uh, next, next, uh, next to uh, Firestar. Clark Starfire. Fire. Sorry, I'm. When I think of that name, I think Star, I think Firestar from Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. That's what I think of. I think of the Marvel character. But anyway, uh, I don't. Those are my two least favorite characters. Um, I've asked people online that suggest episodes for me, and a few, a few other ones that they, of course, they su they suggested the the X episodes, uh, and I haven't gotten to that point yet. But the only other episode I watched was, uh, was a cyborg episode where he's wanting to be human again. Uh, I can't remember any other details from that one, but uh, but yeah, I was watching the terror apps, the terror episodes in. That last episode rips your fucking heart out. It's just like, fuck you, you want to have a ending? Well, no, you're not getting it. Yeah, that's what I actually really always liked about their stuff. They've always been dark, and especially for a kid's cartoon. Yeah. It's like, wow, this is pretty dark. I don't... Considering how goofy Teen Titans is. Yeah. That's what kind of repelled me away from the show. I mean, I think that's what made it also enjoyable. It's got... It's got, I guess, a little bit of the, I want to say a little bit of the Adventure Time aspect of, you know, it's got the jolly, happy episodes, and it's, it's also got the really fucked up episodes. It's just, if we were talking about this last night, the, the Lynch King, uh, that was a Lynch. Yeah, the Lynch King. Yeah, that was a fucked up episode. Was there ever a resolu resolution to that episode, or did it just, okay, it actually came back to it. I expect they were going to pull, like, a tree trunk thing. No. Where they didn't explain it until like eight episodes later. No, it's, it's there. 
And, you know, they always do that as a season finale into a season. They always, I don't know, I think that's, like, what really, really brings me in is uh, the Lich storyline and the uh, Ice King and, uh, fuck, I forgot her name. There's an episode I watched. Oh, Marceline. Marceline, yeah. Like, yeah, I saw two. that episode. That yeah, those are, like, the two, like, stories that really just brings me into Adventure Time. Uh, the, I remember one episode which made me... I feel bad for the ice skin. It's not that episode. That, well, that, obviously, but, uh, it just felt, I felt bad for him in a more funny way, because it was, it was like when he was kidnapping the princesses, and he was just want, he was just wanting love. <laughs> but he was going at it all the wrong ways. I mean, too, creep, to uh, well, I mean, he's, they, he's they, insane. To, to the, uh, whole, uh, you want to see my basement? <laughs> that kind of shit. Uh, I've seen. i seen. He's actually like a really hilarious character because there's the dark, the dark aspect of his backstory, but the character he's itself old, is. The character is hilarious. He's my favorite character. Just that voice. The, which I wish I knew who did his voice because it sounds familiar. I mean, yeah, Adventure Time definitely got like really. And talk about you know a show that was hard to get into for a season. Well, for me. Uh, yeah, it was kind of hard. It, it's hard for a lot of people. Some people, they watch that first episode and be like, I get this. I, I won't watch this because it's complete random. Well, I didn't start on the first episode. I think I started on a pretty bad... I think I started on Inkyridian, the one you were talking about, episode yeah. 5. And I thought that was just really weird. And honestly, that, that was the most normal episode of the first couple episodes. I mean, they dive you right into lumpy space in the second episode. Yeah. Uh, it was. It's definitely something hard to get into, so I can understand why people hate it. Cause I hated it too when I first started. Uh, see, I never had like a hatred for it. I never even. It, it never popped in my mind. It was like, oh, people like this. Cool. I, mean, I was like, it's colorful. It's creative. Yeah. Hey. I mean, the problem. The problem with me with it first was it was trying to get into it, and the fact that so many people were trying to bash it into my head. Like, you gotta watch it. Like ML. Kinda it had like, the ML piece in Kind of like bronies. Yeah, it had the MLP syndrome where it was just people were drowning it in you, and you're like, "Yo, watch it!" And it was everywhere, and it was crossovers. Well, and it was see, just like, well, see, I was about to say say that, uh, like with me, it, like I never had a hatred for Adventure Time. I was like, eh, "It's colorful, it's creative, it works." Uh, I was the same way with My Little Pony. Cause I actually gave my little. I find it funny that I didn't really give Adventure Time, a, a, you know, the the ten episode treatment. But I gave My Little Pony the 10 episode treatment. Because it was like, it, well, one, it was the first couple episodes, and I was like, eh, where's what? What are people talking about? Why, why, why is this such a big deal? Started to watch it a little more, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, clever writing, good characters, you know. I never hated it at the beginning, but some people fucking hate it. And it's just like, I don't think it's worth hating. I don't, even if you just, you, you hate cute, you hate cutesy, you hate. You know, you hate this kind of shit. You you, you know, can't understand it. I don't think it's hateable. You, there's no it's, feasible way to hate it. it. It was the it was everywhere, and you saw like comic artists using its styles. You saw its eye styles. It's, yeah, well, you saw it everywhere, and I think that was my problem with it was when it was plastered. Adventure Time. Or? Everywhere. Yeah. Adventure but, well, time. I mean, I'm talking about both. But I mean, it was just the people made it so intolerable because they kept on saying, it's like the it's best the, thing ever, you don't understand. Like the people who keep crawling on and on about Attack on Titan. Yeah. It's they just, hype it up so much that you just, you're like... <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just, it just get, I think what really just annoys me about stuff like that is you just can't get away from it. Yeah. And sometimes you need a break of stuff, and when you can't get that break, it becomes highly intolerable. And you want to know when I started watching the Time? Because I really got into the show, regular show. I really got into that one. I really like that show. Uh, it's not as good. I'll, I'll say that right out. It's not as it's not as good. I had a good season one, but after that, it just kind of. I, th- I don't know. I thought season two was pretty pretty uh, was pretty cool. But um, Adventure Time, I just I don't know. It just handles itself a lot better, and it knows exactly how. There's a science behind it. it it's hard to tell. Well, I mean, it's really hard to tell, but there's a science behind it. Finn from season one, because we're talking about characters, and then you've got Finn later on, he he gets more tolerable. He's actually a lot more 
Told like I have problems I rewatching like, season I, one. I actually like I actually like him from from the first episode I watched. So I never had that issue. Yeah, because uh, he kind of dropped the whole, you know, the mathematical, the weird lingo that they used for the season one. Which I actually thought was hilarious, but... Yeah, they really stopped, they dropped that, and a lot of the characters become more mature yeah. and more interesting. The only character that I turned on was the princess. I, I can't remember her name, but the princess is... Which one? There's like a bunch of... I, I know, but the, the, you know, the princess princess. The bubblegum? Yeah, that's the one. I got to where I fucking hate that character. I, I thought, just cannot stand her. I thought she was interesting. I think she's a little insane. Honestly. I think that's what makes her interesting. That's another thing. That's why I like Finn so much. He's not just a... He has a problem. He has a mental problem with, with how much he is all for adventure. Like, he's like punching the ground. He's like, yeah, adventure! Bam! Just punching the ground. I mean, he kind of changes from going to, oh, let's go on adventure to, oh, I want to be a hero. Yeah, I mean, they, they make it more likable. And I actually like that, like, in the Inkoranian episode, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but in that episode, you, you notice that he, like, he, he's all about getting this book. He, he, he wants this book. But he, like, throws that out the window when, when like, he thinks somebody's in danger or he, somebody needs his help. He just yeah, kind of throws that out the window. I forgot what they do with the Ink. Yeah, that was just the Lich episode when the Ink Conradian came back, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah. I, I don't know so if that, That's something that's really interesting with Wolf Avenger time. They bring back a lot of their old stuff. Yeah. From past season. Everything seems to be tied together. Yeah. Uh, I really need to watch more of that show. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's got hidden missed episodes, but it's got, you know, rehooks. It definitely has yeah, rehooks. Yeah. It. it I've seen several shows where it's like, I'm not really into this, and then it has an episode where it just pulls you right back in. Yeah, because what's really good about Adventure Time, and they, you know, do progression of the season, it does this a lot better. We're not really talking about characters anymore, are we? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, like, if you look at the characters from Adventure Time, you know, Ice King's likable because he's just insane, and he's got that dark backstory. I don't even think, like, you make it sound like you need a dark backstory to be interesting. Well, we don't but, really need uh, that much of a dark backstory, but you just have to have the character to be at least interesting. Yeah. In a sense. And I don't know, I guess maybe that's what I find interesting are those dark parts. Uh, so that's probably why I, I like dark characters. The, it just, it's because it's so, it's because the show's so bouncing colorful, it's just, when dark shit like that comes in, it's just so striking and just, you can't believe the show would go this route. And then there's some sh there's some shows I've I've seen before where it's like the show's not that good, and then they have that one episode where you're like, damn, that's actually really good. Yeah. Like, uh, remember the show Danny Phantom? Uh, I don't think I watched it. There's an episode where he kind of falls into he kind of it, uh, it okay you don't know the basically this kid he gets ghost powers basically, which by the way one of the things I loved about the show was it had callbacks not only to the Ghostbusters, you mean, honestly, with with the you know the ghost capture machine, the uh, the holding thing and all that, that's stuff right out of Ghostbusters. But it also has some hints to Filmation's Ghostbusters, the uh, other Ghostbusters, uh, like like the fa the Phantom uh, co coffee thing. I can't think of what they're called. Furnace. Uh, Fatten Furnace, or whatever it's called. Uh, that's something straight out of Filmation's Ghostbusters, because that's one of, that was one of their uh, tools in, in that cartoon. Um, but besides the point, and, and basically this is a superhero show. This is a superhero show. Uh, but there's one episode where he... where Danny Phantom finds himself in another dimension, where uh, like his parents never met, he was never born. In fact, it, his mom is with his in his universe with is with his arch arch nemesis, um, Vlad Plasmus. I love that name, Vlad Plasmus. Um. Anyway, and just I was never really that big into the show, but there was some clever stuff that kind of made me kind of want to watch it. Then there was an episode where it's just like. 
this episode just turned out to be like really good. Just and really, it's one of those sappy episodes about you know the the love between uh, a parent parents and their child, even if they don't. And this is kind of funny how it, it's like you know even though she in this dimension has never seen him before, when she finds out he he's her son, she's fully loving and all that. She's completely accepted of it. Also because we're doing a show with the uh, ghost and uh, all sorts of crazy shit. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't the smartest episode. It wasn't the cl most clever episode, but it was like, that was actually really effective. Um, and it was one of those newer shows on, on Nickelodeon that I actually like. And keep in mind, at that point, I hated Nickelodeon. Which sh shows like Th that te robot teenage girl or whatever, uh, that well, it was pretty terrible. Uh, it just, there's a lot of them I couldn't stand. I can't name half of them. I mostly saw these shows because th that's what my cousin would watch. And I was shocked to find out SpongeBob was still around. But anyway, um, I don't know where to go from here. Uh, I, there's, and there's still thousands a of lot, characters. A lot of Western Western cartoons. Um, this might know, become the theme for for the next episode. Yeah, but uh, I'm trying to think like you know, courage. Even though actually his character is actually kind of interesting. I don't know, really. I I don't think that show was character. I really don't think that show was character driven at all. Oh, it, it was just basics. I mean, yeah, it was basic, but I still liked Courage because he was the character that was afraid that had to overcome his fears for the people he cared about. Yeah, okay, one character, one moment that I really like is when Eustace actually shows, like, uh, concern for his wife. Yeah, like, I know, right? The, 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 the bed, the mattress episode. Do you remember what the chant was? Because I just remember something. It was Robbie Rue. Pick him in the dish. No, fuck. I fucked it up. I, uh, it's been too long since I watched it up. You got more than what I can think of. I'm just remembering Courage going. Kick him in the dish. Roo, roo, roo. Uh, it's like the, at the end. It's something like that. But yeah, I remember Courage going. Roo, oh. roo, roo, roo. Oh, roo, roo, roo. How do you do? How do you Kick him in the dish pan. Roo, roo, roo. How the fuck do you remember that? There's little things in life I can remember. Oh my god. Kind of like how I can remember all the Kind of like I can remember all the names of the Megazords <laughs> from from my Marvel Power Rangers. But I mean, if you think about like a lot of the old cartoons, their, their characters were very basic, but they were still interesting. But they were just speaking of old characters. characters um, you, you know the concept of how a character kind of writes itself. Yeah. That that's what the creator of uh, Garfield said in an interview. He said that it was the question was something like. Um, how can you still write for this character? How do you still come up with ideas? And he said, I don't write for Garfield. Garfield writes itself. And, you know, it's getting the comedies, but, um, well, we kind of started on comedy, but. Um, you look at a lot of those old cartoon characters like uh, Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny basically writes itself. Daffy Duck, right? Basically, you can take Daffy Duck, put him on a cruise boat. There you go, episode right there. You you can you immediately know what you could do with this character on a boat. Tom and Jerry put them on a cruise boat. In fact, they did. Yeah. Um, several times, twice. I I know. No, one was a battleship. One was a cruise ship. Yeah. Uh, it's like Homer Simpson. Put them in space. There's your episode. There's just some characters that they don't have a whole lot of character development. There's. There is no character development for Homer, but um, the character, yeah, there's so much to play with with just that character. You don't need, like I said, you don't need a complex character to have a good character. An example, Samurai Jack. Uh, Samurai Jack didn't really have a whole lot of character. Because he didn't have a whole lot on screen, but you still felt for him for a character that didn't have a whole lot. Mm. I, I don't know. I can't honestly think of a character that I really uh, see. Samurai Jack, you you know why I love it. I love it out of a, out of an artistic standpoint. Uh, I, in fact, that in fact, I watched the uh, 
the uh, Three Archmen episode again. Um, it's not when I remember it. I just remember the the ending by. Uh, I just remember the ending to the episode. I don't remember all the talking before that part. Uh, I did not remember the Vikings. I think they were Vikings. I can't remember. Robot Vikings. Ro and by the way, that has to be the most awesome thing ever. Robot Vikings. Throw in Cyber Gorilla and there we go. It, yeah, I have no idea what I want to talk about. There's a no. comic book called Brute Force. No. <laughs> it's, ro it's like Robo Gorilla versus Cyber Bear or something like this. Cyber Gorilla versus Robo Bear. But yeah, Robot Vikings. Robot Zombie Vikings. There you go. There's a movie for Brad Jones. Well, yeah, when it really all just comes down to characters, there's there's a lot of them that are there, and a lot of them that are rememberable, but there's only a short handful that actually really affect people. Yeah. Speaking of, and I know we were trying to stick to Western stuff, but just, I was thinking of other characters people really got upset with when they died. Uh, go, on, go on the anime for a sec. Uh, Wizard Mom from Digimon. People, I... I still hear people talk about how that, how his death made made them cry. Now, oh, of course, wait, wait, did Digimon even die? I thought they they kind of came up with a cop out. Oh, you know they don't truly die unless no Wizard Mon actually died because his da his data was erased. Is if there's no more data, that Digimon is dead. Hmm. So I don't think they. I don't know. It's been so long since I've seen Digimon, so all I know they're gonna brought him back at the end, <laughs> for all I remember. But I'm pretty sure they killed him off, and that was stuck. At least they kill people off. Uh, Pokemon. Uh. Oh come on. Oh, Pokemon. Like don't don't pull that whole de death makes it better. Because <laughs> there's. Well, I mean, there's not like really sad episodes for Pokemon. Even like the Butterfree episode is really sad. I'm like, no. I don't remember it. Uh, it's when Ash releases Butterfree to go be free. Oh, is this one of the? Is this one of the? Be free! If it one of really those, loves you, it comes back. Get out of here! Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know where that comes from. It comes from an old movie, but uh, yeah, I haven't seen enough of Pokemon to really uh, it's say cheesy. anything. Easy. Like the only episode I even ever remember is the Meowth episode. <laughs> And it was a whole I still love that concept that only one Pokemon talks. Well, and he has like a Brooklyn accent. They might as well have, have Gilbert Godfrey do his voice. Um, Can you imagine that before he... It'd be Iago all over again. Well, yeah. I think that's really about it for characters. I mean, like I said before, there are a lot, a lot of characters. But there's only so much. Really. There's only so much, so many characters we can come, we can talk about now. I'm sure we'll come up with thousands of other characters that we can talk about. Um, Especially when we watch more stuff. Yeah, but let's. What's the time? We're about to hit thirty minutes. Okay. Uh, goodbye. So that would be an hour. All right. Mm -hmm. well, we'll kind of wrap this up. Uh, favorite character. Now we're gonna go with. I'm not saying. I'm, because I'd be too big. I'm going to go by certain categories. Favorite animated character. And now this could be children's shows. This could be adult. This could be something off like Adult Swim. No anime. Yeah, cause we, we've done that topic quite yeah. a bit. <laughs> no anime, so. So. That's going to be hard for you, Anna. Come back to me. You go first. Gentlemen first. Fuck. Yeah, uh, anime easy. Uh, shit. Um, yeah, about it being anime. Um, that's it's just because I, I'm thinking of like a bunch of women. I'm like I can't pick. Um. Okay, I'm trying to think. What is one of my favorite characters out of animation? That can't be anime. Can't be anime. Uh. Hmm. There's, there's a handful of characters I like, but I wouldn't say I really like them. Like, but, but, like, like your awesome. favorite, but... Uh, I mean, like, there's one that makes me laugh a lot, like Jake the Dog, uh, Double D, uh... Hmm. Let's see. I 
I always enjoy courage, but you know, to make the top list for them, that's that's a different thing. That is such a, I didn't I, I really underestimated how hard that would be. We already said our video with characters because you said we ever yeah. I said uh Nugger. I, I snake I mean. But yeah. It's just it's <sighs> Holy uh, shit. Um uh <laughs> Re riveting stuff. Well, I mean, somebody, somebody's, somebody is probably going to listen to this and to be like, "What the fuck's going on?" Well, I mean, this is kind of like hard because I'm thinking, and what keeps coming up is like a lot of the shows I like, but every time I rethink of them, it's like, "Oh, look, the characters." Well, the characters were okay; they weren't really outstanding. Uh, I'm thinking Batman right now, but. Everyone's gonna say Batman. My little kid, Batman. Well, I think I was gonna say Batman because I was talking about Batman earlier, but uh, and yeah, because I mean, there's a lot of characters I like because they make me laugh, and this is why I like them in the fields of American cartoons is because they're usually hilarious. Ah, uh, it you depends know? on the show. Like I can go by show by show and name off my favorite character. That can't do that. that here. That will take forever. Because there's too many shows I like. Um, God, I think all I can do is just give like a handful of characters I just it really is, enjoy yeah. every time. You know, I would be like Jake the Dog, Double D, uh, Ice King, definitely, uh, Marceline. Try to uh, kind of how about one per show? Yeah, one per show. Then I just go. Uh, mm, for Avenger Time, I'm gonna go with Ice King just because he's hilarious every time. Courage, be courage. Yeah, courage. Because the courage, courage is fucking yeah. hilarious. Uh, Double D from Ed and Eddie, of course. Um, mm. I think. What else? Uh, you, you know who's my favorite character in, in Samurai Jack? What? Take a while, I guess. Haku? Yep. I just love that <laughs> voice. Just, the, his mannerisms. Well, it's his laugh. That's... He's just hilarious. Even when he's men Even when he's trying to be menacing. Which, by the way, anytime he... It's just the design. It's his design that just cracks me up. It's just like the cat cat face kind of thing. Uh, although I did make the joke that he's in blackface because of the lips, but... Uh, I, but you got... Hey, you got to give him credit for originality. Yeah. I mean, the flaming eyebrows. Remember the episode where... We got to do a Samurai Jack episode. But you remember the episode where they had to fight one on... You know, mono y mono, one on one, no powers, no sword. And then, then yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> His human form. Horrible looking. That, that was hilarious. And that's actually one of my favorite episodes because, you know, Aku was like, we know how this is going to go. And by the way, I think it was voiced by uh, Mako. Uh, he's like, we, all, we, we know where this is going to go. We I was going to try to do this voice, but that we're like, we're not, we know where this is going to go. You're going to slice at me with your sword. I'm going to run away and say, I'll get you next, next time. time. And then he does it. And he's like, see? <laughs> he's like, hey. No, because he's like, you cheated. No, I did it. You cheated. What? It just, at the end of the episode. No, it's like, like, I know you would know. I knew that you would know that I knew. You knew that I would cheat. That I knew that you would cheat. <laughs> I love that episode. And... Just hilarious. Um, yeah, that's never right. Jack Aku, obviously. Uh, I'm with you with... I go with Ice King for, from Adventure Time. I'll go with Ice King. Um, well, I mean, because he's just hilarious because you can actually kind of relate to him by being lame, but you still think you're kind of cool. Like, I always... Oh, he just found There's that letter. There's nothing cool about Ice King. He's a well, loser. Like he, yeah, he's lame, but he always thinks he's cool. He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm cool. I can be your buddy. I'm your buddies. buddy. Buddy? Buddy? Huh? Buddy? 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 Huh? I mean, he just doesn't want to be alone. That's the thing. I think yeah, that's the most like, relatability I'm so King. alone. Although, whenever I hear that, I think... You, you have any idea who I think of when I hear the, the, the uh, I'm alone line? No. I'm so alone. I think of my tea from, not from Captain Planet, but wait, yeah, it's from Captain Planet. The pissed off, the 
the pissed off Indian guy who thinks he's Marty from Captain Planet on in the on backoverthegloasses dot com. Oh, and it's like heart, heart. <laughs> and when he's pissed off, he's like, "Suck my big fat fucking heart." Yeah, I love that voice. It's, I love that voice because it's so different from from Bargo, the the guy who plays him. Anyway, uh, kind of talk about. God damn it! What? We didn't talk about internet characters, and we were going to. I think we'll save that for later. Oh, we'll, we'll do like yeah, we'll do like an internet sh- uh, review show, whatever. We'll do that some other time. Um. I got plenty of shows, like, from when I was a kid I watched, like, you know, Batman, X-Men, stuff like that. Uh, I'm, you know, throw a few ones out there. Um, Batman, can't help it. Don't care what anybody says. I don't care if everybody says the same thing. I don't give a shit. The Joker. Um, or Two-Fit. Two-Fit? I don't know. You gotta watch, you gotta watch the episode, Almost Got Him. Because... That table is basically the table of my favorite villains. Even Killer Croc, he has a great line in that. Nah, I'll... Nah, I'll keep quiet about that. But the line he says is... Uh, keep in mind, the concept of the episode is... All, mo- most of, some, some of the biggest villains in the show, they're just playing poker. That's the entire episode. And they talk about how... They, they share all their stories about how they almost got Batman. And, you know, obviously they would show the... You know, they will show the event, but it. And I just love how all these villains, you know, they, they come off like. Like they will throw each other under the bus. They will stab each other in the back, but they almost act like it. You know, it's business. That's just how it is. That's just how it works. Because uh, you know they still came together and played poker. <laughs> and, and I, uh, but they always throw jokes at each other. Basically, throwing daggers. At other uh they you know they mocked the penguin for being corny and uh like i said killer croc has this great line he's like there i was there was the bat i threw a rock at him and they're all staring at him he's like it was a big rock (laughs) i love that line it was a big rock I, uh, uh, I think that's really just about it for characters. Uh, but, see, now, with shows like Batman, I can pick favorite villains. I already did, but besides Joker, I would have to say, uh, I don't know, I like Penguin. Just because, of the, you know, it's the basic concept, he, you know, he's revolting, but he thinks he's, he's classy. Uh, he thinks he's higher class, but he's not. It's just he's so committed to it, though. But he's still revolting to everybody else. It's just it's actually kind of sad. You, there's another episode you really should watch. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the episode. Um, other shows, other shows, and it's when you get into action shows, it's kind of hard to really pinpoint characters, especially if you go back to some of these old ones, that, and you kind of realize some of these aren't that great. Spider Man, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but X Men, I think. Everybody has their favorite. Usually it's Wolverine, but I've always liked Gambit or Beast. Beast's my favorite character. There you go, Beast. Uh, I watched a lot of comic book shows when I was a kid. Uh, if I had to pick something newer, huh. what about Coop from Mega XLR? Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Uh, no, you want to know who my favorite character is? And he only has one episode. Magnanimous, voiced by Bruce Campbell. <laughs> and it literally it is pretty much Bruce Campbell. Has the chin, he has the eyebrows. It's Bruce Campbell. Just with a just with a tiny tiny little legs and arms. <laughs> he's basically uh, he's a uh, he's a parody of an Iron Man villain. I think Iron Man. I could be getting my uh, franchise is wrong, but um some other shows that had likable characters. Um, do you ever watch Powerpuff Girls? Yeah. Who's your favorite villain out of that show? I think Mojo Jojo. We need to do a villain episode. <laughs> you, yeah, I like Mojo Jojo. Just... Dude, he saved the fucking world with a piece of bread. 
<laughs> but I just like his mannerisms, the way he talks and all that. Just the. Well, when he, he talks about him, he's like, I'm Mojo Jojo. He has like this. He sounds like a mixture of Japanese. He sounds Japanese, and he also sounds uh, German. We can see the fun they have with the character. Yeah, they just. They There's just a lot of it, actually. Yeah, I mean. The only character I didn't really like was. Uh, Big pink guy. The, the hillbilly. Oh, uh, I don't know what I remember. Fuzzy Pumpkins or something, something like that. Like that. Uh, uh, I can't remember a whole lot of villains. Mojo Jojo is the one I remember. Him, I remember. The, yeah, probably because he's kind of a creepy little fucker. I, I, he, I think he creeped everybody out. Um, there's so many shows we can go from um, and we came up with a few topics for other episodes uh, the, I guess I should say that uh, we normally do four episodes a month we're probably going to miss one because of Thanksgiving and just letting you guys know ahead of time uh, there will only be three episodes next month because of Christmas uh, but in January that's when we'll get back to doing four episodes a month um, and I like to say this, if if anybody who's listening to this, which I know it's not a whole lot, but if you're listening to this and you have an idea for a topic for us, just uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, if we like it, we'll, we'll do an episode on it. I don't know when, how soon it'll be done. I mean, it depends if we already have a, plan, a set plan, which we usually don't. Uh, I, we came up with this episode what yesterday? Yep. Or, no, actually no. We can we did kind of think of this in advance, but uh, usually we come up with it like a day early. But you know, day before the show. But seriously, if you guys have any suggestions, just let us know. Just let us know in the comments. Also, if you're like, if you have any questions for us, give you know, let us let us uh, see your questions and again in the comments. Where can they send their questions to, good sir? Are no, just the comments? Just the comments, sir. No Twitter? Com no Twitter? No Twitter. No Twitter. That, wait. Twitter. Um. Yes. No, not Facebook. <laughs> I don't get on Facebook enough. Uh, the quickest, wa quickest way is to leave comments on, on the channel. Uh, e either me or Don will see it. Uh, how often do you check the channel? Not that often. You need to start then. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I'll think of a new place for people to go, but as of now, ju just uh, send your comments in, in YouTube comments. Um, we'll, be, we'll be looking for them if we ever get a new comment, which is not very often. Um, I'll have Don check it every day, see if you... See if you guys sent any questions. If we do, we'll do a bargain bin episode and answer your questions. So until then, I'm Philip. And Don. And we'll see you next.